Hi, um, what I'm going to show you today is the steps I took to create a new EBS backed image on EC2 for building a custom platform as a service um, for JBoss. So hopefully you'll find it interesting. Um, so the first thing that I did was uh, I went in and I said launch instance. When I selected that, um, what happened was, of course, it gave me all these options. So I went to community AMIs. Now, you will have to have entitlements to do this. So you'll probably need to contact your sales rep and find out um, how what your entitlements are as far as what application servers and, and what different licenses you may have. But um, I typed in or I went in and I looked for private images. Um, oops and typed in Red Hat, and you'll see we have quite a few. Now the, the key, or the ones that we are very interested in, are the EBS-backed images, and the reason for that is because it gives you the ability to save the state of your image. If you don't do that, um, the disadvantage to that, <laughs> of course, is that you will have to, um, you know, if you ever stop your instance, all the data that you have saved or all the um, activity that has occurred disappears as if it never existed which is not good, especially if the system goes down or you give rights to someone and they accidentally shut it down. So um, so EBS is great. Uh, you'll notice we have RHEL 6 um, as it has released. We have RHEL 6 starters. That's what I used. So you can go in. Um, I ended up using the 64-bit. Uh, so when I chose select, this is pretty much the same as any other um, creating a new instance. I actually chose an extra large because I'm going to put quite a bit of JBoss stuff on there. And I want, um, you know, at least 15 gigs of RAM. I think that's useful. Uh, I have tried it with the large and I think I was able to get one or two platforms going. But again, I'm trying to install the entire platform. So um, I like to have a lot of memory available. So you'll pick the instance that you want. Something that is interesting, uh, or something that you'll be interested in knowing, I think, is you may want to choose which one of these zones you come you utilize. Because for backup purposes, you're going to be creating a volume, um, and then s creating snapshots of your instance based on that volume. And the volume in your instance must be in the same availability zone. So just um, keep that in mind. All right. So. Uh, I usually just take the default for this because I've built several instances before, but if you've never done this, um, you know, your kernel ID, again, you could choose that. I don't do that. RAM disk, again, I just let it use the default. Easy peasy. Now, here's uh, something rather new, actually. We just got the ability in Amazon to add tags, which is really nice. So that way, when you're looking at an instance in the management console, you can tell which ones are which. Um, that was not easy to do in the past. So... What I did is I just went in and created a key called JBoss, and then for the value, I typed in the different um, platforms I was going to install, just so I had a reference of what was installed on each instance. Then it'll ask you for your key pairs. Actually, I actually have a couple, so I'm going to use RH key pair, but you can use whichever one you want. Just remember that when this key is generated, you need to save it and back it up. If you lose that key, you'll have no way of accessing um, the instance again. You'll have to just recreate it, which would be terrible if you've done a whole lot of work to set it up. So um, be sure that you create a key or use an existing key and then back up upon backup of your um, key pair so that you don't lose access to the system. Then you configure the firewall. Again, I already have a security group with all the ports set up from a previous uh, installation um, where I set up all the ports for, you know, uh, 7080 for John, 8080, right, for standard internal web, uh, web applications. Um, what else is in there? I think I set up a couple ports for, I wanted to run, right, I'm running uh, BRMS, JBoss Operations Network, and EAP or enterprise application platform all on the same machine so I had to use some port adjustments to make sure that they could run um, independently on the same box so you want to make sure that in your security group you've associated the appropriate ports you can always do that at a later time while the instance is running so then you say continue it'll give you a nice little review uh, make sure everything is what you want if it is you can choose launch I'm gonna choose cancel because I've already launched my instances and show you what was created. So you'll notice here I have this extra large image. 
You'll also notice its availability zone is U.S. East C. Um, and of course, the key pair, all the other information that we have. The most important thing um, is the root device is EBS, meaning that I can use Elastic Block Storage, EBS, to store backups and snapshots of my instance at any time. Beautiful. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and create a volume that I'm going to store this information in. I actually have a couple already. I created a 10 gig volume for this one um, simply, again, because I'm going to be storing quite a bit of information. Um, but you'll want to just take a look at how big you want these volumes to be. Then you'll also notice that availability zone matches, right? So US East 1C matches the instance availability zone. I then will right click on it and you'll notice here I have the ability to detach. Well, I'll take a look at one. Um, oops. Oh, they're all attached right now. <laughs> but if I had not attached this already, instead of a detach, you would see attach. So let me go ahead and create a new volume and just show you how that works. So when you create a volume, again, what you're doing is creating um, a space in the Elastic Block Storage to store your instance data. So I'm going to go ahead and say create very easily. And once I create it, you'll see it's creating here. I have the ability to create a snapshot from the volume, delete the volume, and of course, as soon as it's done being created, I'll have the ability to... Um, Create a, as you can or see attach now, it to an instance, is allowing me Sometimes to do I hit refresh because I'm a little impatient or, um, or, and want um, to see it. The state of that. Once that's done, you'll notice the ability to attach it. Attaching the volume, again, it will be looking in that same availability zone. So right now, I don't have any instances in that availability zone. So that would be your first indication if it says none here that you may have created a volume in the wrong zone. Very easy to fix. You just delete the volume and recreate it. Um, so you will have to make sure that that occurs. Once that does occur, you'll be able to mount a device. Um, I think I use Des, Dev uh, SDF in order to get access to that instance. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that now since I was just doing that for you guys. Um, yes. So once that's gone, um, again, going back to this instance, so right now it is attached, you'll notice here, to this instance, 102 for, you know, 46F. If I go back to my instances, I can see 46F is my EBS-backed volume. You'll also notice here I have the ability at any time to stop or start my instance. That's something you don't get with typical instances. I then also have the ability to create an EBS AMI, which is very useful. So I will be doing that once I finish this process. I'll be doing that so that anyone, and I'll be publishing it, so that you guys will have access to EBS images that are already have JBoss installed, for example. Um, okay, so now we have this EBS image. It has been um, attached to a volume. That volume, you'll see the attachment here shows which uh, service it's attached to. You'll actually see I have two different instances associated there. And now what I could do is create a snapshot from the volume. So the volume that it's going to create a snapshot of is coming right from DevSDA in this case. Um, depending on which one I have selected, right? So um, anyway, so I think that's pretty much it. That gets you started. Um, we, at this point, have talked about creating an instance, creating a volume, attaching the instance to the volume, and then being able to create a snapshot of your instance. So the next step, which I'll do in the next video, is actually start the installation of the application servers um, and the application server platforms that I'll be using. So that'll include like JBoss EAP, BRMS, um, Enterprise Portal, and uh, the Operations Network. So stay tuned. <laughs>